Okay, this is chapter 5, test review for trigonometry. And what this will give you, I guess, is the problems on the end of chapter test for you to, to look at. Uh, perhaps there's more of there, those there than you really need to focus on. So I'm going to tell you the ones you need to focus on. Uh, problem 1, problem 4, 6, 8... And then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, which really covers the others. And I want to show you, I guess, what I will be asking and how I will be asking the questions so it's not brand new for you. First of all, problem one. Um, they give you some things, and you're supposed to find the rest of the trig functions. They give you that the cosine of theta is 24 25ths. They also tell you that theta is in quadrant 4. And you're supposed to find the rest of the six trig functions. Well, what I could usually start with is so the sine of theta, I don't know that. The cosine of theta, I do know that. That's 25 over, or 24 over 25. The tangent theta, and then there's cotangent. I guess we'll go with that. But one of the things you got to make sure you're careful of is in the chapter test, I think I changed the order of these last four. So be careful. Make sure you're answering secant and cosecant in the right place, the tangent and cotangent. I usually start out with sine and cosine, though, no matter what. So these are what I have to fill in. And they sort of wanted you to take care of this by using trig identities, because that's what this chapter is about. But I say, uh, if you've got information that you can get to this a lot quicker, and especially for the final then you should take care of this, you know, the best way you can. So I'm going to make a picture, that bullseye that I use all the time, the x and y axis and the unit circle, and I know that this angle is in uh, quadrant 4 someplace, and even though the angle theta goes all the way around like that, we can think of then theta as being this one, theta prime, the... Um, reference angle for this. So, what is the cosine? The cosine is the 24 over 25, or the adjacent is 24. The hypotenuse is 25. So, what is y, then? Well, we'll figure that out. Because we know from the Pythagorean theorem that uh, 24 squared plus y squared is equal to 25 squared. Well, if you do your algebra, 24 squared is one of those you might remember. 576 plus y squared. And 25 squared, you really should remember, is 625, if I can find my pin here. So y squared is 625 minus 7. 576, which is one less than 50, right? 49. So y must be 7. Now that's algebraically 7 for this, but remember, when you take the square root, you should consider plus or minus. Is y a positive or negative 7? Because we're in the fourth quadrant, this is a negative 7. So now you have the three values, the x, the y, and the r, the O, the A, the H, and you can find the rest of these trig functions by just using that. Sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, or negative 7 over 25. Tangent is the opposite over the adjacent, or negative 7 over 24. And then the cotangent, which is the reciprocal of the tangent, 24 over negative 7. And you might be asked to, but you might not be asked to, um, simplify. If I say do not simplify, don't worry about rationalizing the denominator or anything. Just write it down. The secant is the hypotenuse over the adjacent, or 25 
over 24, which is also the reciprocal of the cosine and the reciprocal of the sine, is 25 over negative 7. doesn't matter where you put those. But that type of problem on the test, don't spend a lot of time figuring out the trig identity that could help you. To me, this problem is sort of out of place in that sense. Well, let's skip to number four. When you're asked to find the exact value of something, you should think this has got to be special angles. There's going to be square roots in there or something that you can find it. They don't mean to approximate. Usually they want to this in terms of pi and uh, for the angles and stuff like that when they say exact. So there are probably going to be some square roots involved here, but you don't know. When they give you a 5 pi over 12, you should say to yourself, well, this isn't special. My special angles are um, one halfs, right? Pi over two, uh, one thirds and one fourths, and one sixth. Uh, let's see. I guess those are the big ones uh, because it's pi over two, pi over three, pi over four, pi over six, and then multiples of those. Well, which of these would give you five pi over twelve? Well, let's see. One half is really six twelfths. And one third is really four twelfths. And one fourth is three twelfths. And one sixth is two twelfths. So I can either use addition or subtraction. Let's use addition. Which two of these add up to five twelfths? The three and the two, right? So this is the same as the cosine of three twelfths pi. 3 pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 12. But that, remember, we're going to reduce this. We're using then this stuff over here. So this is really the cosine of pi over 4 plus pi over 6. And the sum identity, now this is where you need to use the identity. And uh, sometimes people ask, well, when do I use it and when don't I? When you see something, I guess, where you say, oh, hold it, that's the cosine of a sum of angles. That's the identity. Cosine of the first, pi over 4. Cosine of the second, pi over 6. Minus, when it's plus, the sine of the first, pi over 4. And the sine of the second, pi over 6. Now, if, once again, if I tell you, do not simplify, it's probably because I don't want you to type in too many things, and I don't want you to make a simple mistake. So, what is the cosine of pi over 4? Now, you can remember that from the little uh, table that I gave you, but however you get to it, and I would write that table down uh, right away, and maybe I should do that in the next slide. But then this one, it's the square root of 2 over 2. Put that in parentheses. The cosine of pi over 6 is... This is going to be 1 half. These are in the first quadrant. The sine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. And the sine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. And if I say do not simplify, stop. Um, you can go a little further, I guess, and say this first one when you multiply fractions. Multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators. Multiply the numerators here when you multiply radicals, the same index. 2 times 3 is 6 over that 2 times 2 is 4. And I guess if you want to, you can go further. But when I say do not simplify, you can type this in. Parenthesis SQRT. Maybe I should write that down here. Parenthesis SQRT 2 divided by 2. Close the parentheses. Open another parentheses. 1 divided by 2 minus... Open parentheses, SQRT, 2 divided by 2, close, open, 
SQRT. I'm going to run out of room. 3 divided by 2. Just barely got it in there. And that's what you can type in because of the problems we have with the keyboard and stuff doing exactly what we want. This makes sense. So that's problem number 4. And you may get something hint, hint, like this on the test. So problem six is another find the exact value of. So you got to use some special angles, but now they use degrees. And if you take a look at this, the sine of negative 22.5, first of all, you should probably say to yourself, hold it, that negative's getting in the way. I know that that is a negative sine of a positive 22.5 degrees because of the negative angle identity. Okay. Also, I noticed that 22.5 is half of 45 degrees. There's really, I guess you could find the difference of some 2, but with the 0.5 in there, you're having some troubles with the special angles because none of the special angles are 0.5. So in order to get a 0.5, a half, think of the half angles. So this is really negative sine of 45 degrees over 2, which is negative sine. Now, I'm sorry, what is the half angle formula? Well, it's a negative. Now, you got to be a little careful with these the half angles for sine and cosine. They've got a plus or minus. You've got to determine which it's going to be. If you take a look at the original problem, Negative 22.5 degrees is in which quadrant? It's in the fourth quadrant. And the sine in the fourth quadrant is negative. So, you can really say, okay, okay, forget about that. We know it's going to be negative. Leave it negative. It's going to then be the square root of... 1 minus the cosine of the A, that's 45 degrees in the numerator, over 2. Got the square root of all that stuff. So this is a negative square root. 1 minus the cosine of 45 degrees, square root of 2 over 2, over 2. Now, how would you type that in? That would be sort of interesting, but... Let's see. It's a negative. So you put that in there. You need SQRT. Start your parentheses. But then you need a numerator, so you need another parenthesis. Minus, 1 minus, SQRT, 2 over 2. Close the numerator. Divided by 2 for the denominator and then close that square root. So you've got to make sure left, 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 and then right, right, make sure you end it correctly, or right. And that's how you could type it in to make sure you get this answer right. So this is the answer. And if it says do not um, simplify, you don't need to take it any further than that. Go on to the next problem. I'm assuming maybe too much that you would know how to take that further. That's for a different time. So let's move on to problem number eight, and then I'll probably upload this so you can get to it soon. Um, after problem eight are identities to prove, and I want to show you, it'll take me a little time to get it set up, how we're going to do that um, online on my LSMSA. So please come back and look at the rest of or the second part of this review uh, so that you can see how we're going to do identities online. But this one, I'm going to change this a little bit also. Um, given two trig functions, two different angles, where those angles are located, you want to find the sum, sine of the sum, the cosine of the sum. They said, uh, I think, the tangent of the difference, but I'm going to do a half angle because... You might get a double angle, a half angle. They want the quadrant of A and B, so we need to figure out the sine, S-I-G-N, of the sine, and the sine of the cosine to find out what quadrant A plus B is in, because that's what this is all about. 
we want to find the quadrant. One of these is not enough information. So, if we start working these, what we need to do is make sure we can figure out... Let's get this right. Okay. The sine is the sine of the first, the cosine of the second, plus the cosine of the first, and the sine of the second. So I need the sine of A and the cosine of B. The cosine is the cosine of the first, the cosine of the second, minus, opposite sine, the sine of the first, and the sine of the second. So I need the sine and the cosine of both A and B. The tangent of A over 2 is one of those choices, is if this were written correctly, I guess, the sine of A over 1 plus the cosine of A. So I need the sine and the cosine of that also. So the point is I need the sine and the cosine for all this stuff. So if we start looking at pictures, this will be A. It is in quadrant 1. It has the sine is 5 thirteenths, so 5 and 13. Now, if you, you can go through the Pythagorean theorem, but this is a 5, 12, 13 right triangle. So, what is the sine of A? Well, they gave that to us, 5 thirteenths. We don't know the cosine of B yet. We'll leave some room for that. Plus the cosine of A is 12 thirteenths. We don't need, know the sine of B yet. We'll leave some room for that. But you draw another picture for your angle B. Angle B is in quadrant 2. Someplace here. They give you the cosine as a negative 3 fifths. Well, this is the negative 3, and the hypotenuse is 5. This is a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, and the 4 is positive. So make sure you got the signs correct, plus or minus signs. The cosine of B, they already give you that, negative 3 fifths. The sine of B is 4 fifths. And now you've got all the things you need here, right? So now you can plug in for the cosine of A. Let's see, that was the 12 thirteenths. The cosine of B, which is the negative 3 fifths, minus the sine of A, which was the 5 thirteenths, and the sine of B, which was the 4 fifths, Do the same thing for this and the tangent. I'm running out of room, so I'm not going to do that right now. You guys can take care of that yourselves. Just plug in the values for sine A and cosine A. How do you know what quadrant A plus B is in? Well, you've got to take all the trig functions that have A plus B as its argument. That's the angle. Now, we've got a negative here, but a positive here. This will be a negative 15 over... Um, when you multiply 5 and 13, you get 65. So this is negative 15 65ths. This is a positive 48 65ths. So the sign will be positive. Now over here, we got a negative 36 65ths and a negative 20 65ths. Negative and negative still add up to a negative. Where is the sine positive? Sine is positive in 1 and 2. Where is the cosine negative? The cosine is negative in 2 and 3. Where do they match? Quadrant 2. So, once again, practice some of these problems. They shouldn't be that bad. 
not all of the problems in the review, the chapter tests need to be reviewed. Um, once again, one, four, six, eight. And then I'm going to do uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, or a couple of those, and show you how we will handle the identity verification on the test. So I'm going to upload this, and I need you to come back and look at part two of the review.